In today's video we are going to take a look at this. This is the CO2 SD, which is pretty much the equivalent of the SD to IC on the C64. And we're going to prepare an SD card, try to get it working. Of course, peel the label. Yeah, and uh, see what that uh, thing can do. This is the SD card we need. We will quickly check out what this device is capable of. Visit the website of Lotharek where I bought this uh, from Poland. Um, see how to prepare the SD card, which should be pretty straightforward. Um, put it in and see what goes. So let's first take a look at the CO2 SD device. I paid I guess t about 20 euros for this. And it comes pre-assembled with all the buttons and display and stuff like that. It uses the full size SD card, but you can also use a smaller SD card or micro SD card with, a, with an SD card adapter. There's no SD card included, at least in my version. The connection cable was sorted on, so that's good. And it says here that it does work with SD cards FAT12, FAT16 and FAT32. So my SD card should work. I have formatted that with FAT32. Um, handles ATR um, read-write. So you can write to an ATR file pretty much like you write to a um, D64 file on the C64, uh, which is a, a floppy image. XFD, which is read-only, and COMXEX, which is also read-only. It has a 16 by 2 LCD display um, from which you can choose the files you want to load or the disk image you want to load and then load the files from there. It does seem to handle CO with Turbo. No idea what that means, but there seem to be different read speeds for the CO port. All densities handles up to eight drives um, and can be configured using the Atari only without an SD card present. And here's how you use it. And we don't have to do this because we download a ready-made zip file, which we just copy over. And these are the configuration options. So let's prepare the SD card and then test the device. In order to get the SD card for the CO2 SD prepared, we need to download um, the files from here, which is the easiest way, loader plus train games for SD card. Um, you could also do this by yourself and copy the files in there, but um, if you download the zip file, you get this here, and that is the complete structure for the SD card, so you just copy it over. And let's quickly do that. So I'll quickly open N, and then we just copy this over to here. By the way, my, my SD card is formatted in FAT32 and I will copy one game in here, which is a very classic, which is Rescue and Fractalus, but, but I will rename it. I don't know if I have to rename it, but uh, that is safe and sorry. I will just call it rough.atr and copy it over. There are some trained games in here uh, with the .x dot ex um, suffix. I have no idea what that is. We will check that out now. So let's take out the card and put it in the co sd So on the back of the Atari there is this peripheral port which seems to be called the CO port and we will plug our device in right there and in interestingly enough I think it's uh, upside down but uh, that is just me. So let's plug this in. But let's quickly check this device. Um, there are five buttons. The first is for the drive, so you can put different disks into different drives, which you then can switch with the next drive button. You have next file, um, which cycles through the um, images or the directories on the SD card. And um, up goes directories up and exit exits the, direct, uh, the menus. Select selects an image that will then be loaded into the selected drive. And the shift key is for some options. And I will switch this on. If I just switch it on, you will see I have now um, selected a disk image. 
in disk drive one, which is Rescue on Fractalus. And you can already hear it in the background that it is loading and you can also see it in this little indicator light here. So let me power cycle the machine and I will show you. So it auto boots from the disk. And Rescue on Fractalus was um, an Atari first, actually. It had these excellent 3D graphics and it was ported to many other machines, like the C64 later. And the graphics are quite nice. Didn't expect that. Yeah, so that seems to work just fine. Make sure that you um, use a proper SD card, because it seems to be a little picky on that. And then you can go about and load pretty much any game you like. Okay, I just grabbed my Retro Fighter joystick. If you want to know how I made this, there's a video. Check it out. Uh, not sure how this works. Ah, okay, there we go. And that was pretty impressive for an 8-bit machine, having 3D graphics like that. Oh, you can shoot, nice. Haven't played this in a while. Yay. Nice shooting text. Oh, someone else shooting at us. crash okay so let's uh, try another game and for that we take the device and we just switch to the trained section and we select select and here are some more games Arkanoid for example let's select this one okay that should be in there and now let's reset and see what happens okay it seems to be loading I'm making strange noises ah, okay Ooh. that is not so different from a c64 you even have to press space to skip the crack intro. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Okay, let's try another game. Just say launch game. Oh, and it's Balladash. Now you have to press start on the Atari and then you have press fire on the joystick. Oh, this is really fast. Jesus. That is much faster than the C64 version. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so this seems to be working pretty well. Infinite lives, no. Option one player, select, uh -huh, start to begin game.
all in all, these games look really good. The colors are nicer than on the C64. Oh, okay. And I always got punched. Ouch. Ouch. Mother f Yeah, all in all, I'm really impressed with this uh, Atari. Not bad, really not bad. So let's check what else we have. Option disables the basic. So if you have stuff like that on the screen, at least that's what I read, you hold down option to disable basic and then power cycle the machine again. And that should do the trick. Let's see. Could have very well done without loading sounds. Ah, look at that. So Rotorbound Software presents Choplifter by Dan Golin. So let's start this. Yeah, I would, but... Oh, okay. okay, I can only go in one direction, seems. So that is less impressive now. Oh, that looks more like... 2600 game. Okay, so all in all, I think this is a pretty straightforward device. You have to have a FAT32 or lower formatted SD card put on the zip file. Um, select the drive you want to put the disk image in. Make sure to select drive one if you want to auto boot. Um, Select the file, or put the files on the disk, select uh, on the SD card, select the file, and uh, yeah, off you go. And if you have a game that scrambles on the screen, just hold down Option while powering on the machine, and that's it. Yeah, that's kind of nice. It's like the SD2 IEC for the C64, but I said that already. So if you're interested in something like this, it costs 20 euros, or 25 26 dollars without the cable with the cable it, i guess it's five euros more okay. you should get this nice little device which gives life to your atari if you have one cool thumbs up browsed around on atari age and found another way to use the co2 sd and that is um, pretty much like the um, sd to iec um, has the fb64 file browser there seems to be something like that on the co2 sd so let's quickly open that SD card again and here we can find the co2sd.xex and if you configure the co2sd correctly it should always start this and this is the file browser so you can simply select the files that you want to to start or the disk you want to start so let's try this on the Atari and uh, yeah that would make this a little bit more convenient if you don't have to use the LCD display to select a disk in order to configure the CO2 SD to always load the menu, you have to double press shift. Now we are in config tool mode. And then you can, with the drive button K1, you can select what you want to control. And we want to control config mode every startup. You can do this with the K2 button. You can select between startup and shift and every startup. We select every startup. Then we go to with the K1 key to top drive mode and make sure that this is off. If it isn't, press the, F, uh, press the K2 key and then you're good to go. You press K3 to exit and switch off the computer and let's see if it works. So it's now loading the file browser. And to navigate here, you can use the cursor keys. And I will go into my trained directory. 
and there are my files. And these are the disk images and let's select Frogger. And since I don't know if this needs basic or not, I will keep pressing the option key and the return key and that should load Frogger and it does. And that is much more convenient than uh, navigating with the buttons on the device itself. And there we are. Nice. Okay, so I guess this is a way to use the CO2SD with the file browser. Uh, makes it much more convenient. You can uh, organize your files and you don't have to fiddle around with the buttons on the device itself. Cool. So um, yeah, that's the CO2SD. Hope you like this video and can make good use of it. And uh, until next time, bye bye. Thank you for watching. Retro is the new black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.